Hey everybody, it's Sneaky Narcotic back at it again with another YouTube video. I apologize for not putting out some videos over the last couple days. It's just been crazy, you know, with the holiday coming up and everything. But I am back and we are doing some more uh, Ravnica Allegiance spoilers. Um, so we, we basically saw up to this point. I did want to show you guys and I'm, uh, hold on. Uh, 11 there we go full screen yeah sorry about that I um I did want to show you guys on the website today because I'm not exactly uh, able to make a PowerPoint tonight but I did want to show you guys some of these full arts that they came off with uh, like the Rakdos fire wheeler I don't remember if that's the one I used but look at this really cool Lavinia uh, Azoria's Renegade looks looks sick as hell. It looks like a renegade, you know? Um, anyways, they did make an alternate art to the Gate Colossus. I can't tell you which one it is. Uh, there's this one, which shows off how much of a Colossus it is. And then there's this one, which also shows off how much of a Colossus he is. But anyways, that's not what you guys came for. Let's get into the actual video I uh, we'll start with Aeromunculus um, so Aeromunculus Aeromunculus is a 2-3 flyer that comes down for one generic one green one blue um, and now they're finally showing us what uh, what ability the uh, Simic Guild is going to come up with and that is adapt so adapt um this one it is two generic one green one blue uh adapt one if this creature has no plus one plus one counters on it put a plus one plus one counter on it um it is a a common and it is common for a reason that is a hefty price to have to pay for an adapt just to get a, a you, you basically are paying one two three four five six seven mana let's just take the colors away from it seven mana for a three four flyer um so that definitely belongs in the common slot i will say though i love the art on it, it it's a, hum a homunculus and a mutant ah, it just looks sick as hell um and then the next card the zagana over here utopian speaker two generic one green one blue merfolk wizard i kind of predicted when um they they made the simic ascendancy from the last video that uh it would it would end up being a merfolk deck that i would probably uh make out of simic and i was talking to my buddy he played the uh other ravnicas and he was talking about how mostly simic has been a merfolk-esque uh guild so it is interesting to see them stick with that merfolk. Um, let's see what his ability is. It is a legendary creature. I guess it's a she. Yeah, it looks kind of like a she. Uh, where's the minus button? Um, okay, so when Zagana, a uh, utopian speaker, enters the battlefield, if you control another creature with a plus one, plus one counter on it, draw a card. Then it says adapt. Uh, four generic, one green, one blue. If this creature has no plus one plus one counters on it, put four plus one plus one counters on it. Each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has trample. So I am and am not liking this adapt. This is a uh, rare slot. You know, you see it with the gr uh, with the gold there. Um, and my problem with that is that. The adapt cost is just looking so freaking hefty. And then on top of that, it's not a continuous. It is. It says if this creature has no plus one plus one counters on it. On top of that, if I was to use, um, let's go over here and I'll type it in. Deep root elite images. So deep root elite. Open image a new tab. Deep Root Elite says, whenever another merfolk enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on target merfolk you control. I could not do this 
and still adapt. Because, I will, okay, I can't do this and target Zagana because I wouldn't be able to adapt. It would, it would make adaption worse. And a lot of people, a lot of YouTubers I've been listening to are talking about how Simic needs to not be about these plus one, plus one counters. They're calling it unoriginal, um, uninnovative, old, boring, and old. Um, I just think that if you're going to make it about plus one, plus one counters, it needs to go out of control. Um, I mean, I, I hate to bring it back up again in a second video, but we played Commander Anthology Volume 2. Uh, everybody remembers Proliferate. I was kind of hoping they would bring Proliferate into this set, and that would be a crazy type of build to build around. Proliferate. Uh, add a counter. <laughs> you know, it, it would have been pretty cool. And that's all I'm going to say on Simic right now. Um, they're not wowing me, even though I wanted it. I wanted them to wow me. Uh, that little trample part, that's cool and everything, but I'm paying so much mana for them to just kill it. You know, um, a two mana, oh, well, actually, there is no two mana spell, no, actually, excuse me, sorry, thoughts in my head just went awry there. Um, there is Price of Fame. Price of Fame. MTG. Yeah, guys, sometimes they pick the best names. So, Price of Fame, MTG. This spell costs two less to cast a target legendary creature, uh, destroy target creature, and surveil too. So, yes, Price of Fame would be fantastic against Sagana. And that's just one card for two mana that, once I hit this adept, because this is this is an instant, once I hit this adept, um, pay the mana for it and go to adept. He, uh, my opponent could, on that trigger, kill my Zagania, and then I just spent six mana for not crap. You know, that's 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 what's getting me about this. Um. Anyways, uh, enough on that. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna come back to this section here because some of it's in like Spanish, I think. Um. But these are not. So let's read right to left because I gotta zoom in on this incubation and. Incongruity. Incu I, I will have words later. Um, so Sphinx Insight. Two generic, one white, one blue. Part of the Azorius Guild. Draw two cards and then abend them. If you cast this spell during the main phase, uh, your main phase, you gain two life. Now, it, 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 it deserves its common. But in Popper, for Popper, this would be really cool. Um, not a lot of people play Popper, and I only really play it when Arena has it online. Um, and I, but I do enjoy playing Popper. Um, it's basically like getting a revitalize. You know, you gain three life, draw a card. Everybody's seen this card um, in some sort of white deck. And then it's like that plus a divination. Which is two generic, one blue. Draw two cards. Uh, so those together would cost five. It's basically giving you a one mana discount. And so, like I said, in Popper, that's just pretty good. Those are two cards that are played in Popper. So, um, not too, too shabby. Uh, I wasn't expecting Azorius to have a, have a bendum. This, this is a weird ability when Azorius, um, everybody has told me Azorius has been all about control in the past. And so... It's interesting to see that. I haven't really seen what Azorius is wanting to do with, you know, the only other Azorius card that I know for a fact is Lavinia. Um, yeah, so with this one just locking out mana on... Uh, yeah, locking out mana and... And not allowing you to pay uh, to to play free spells. Um, but Abendum, uh, 
on this card. So five generic, one white, one blue emergency powers. It's an instant. Each player shuffles their hand in graveyard into their library and draws seven cards. Exile emergency powers. Um, let's stop there before the embendum. A, a denim. Oh my god, I've been saying it wrong. I've been saying ha addendum. Ugh. Anyways, guys, sorry. Uh, like I said, been a crazy week. Um, each player shuffles their hand in graveyard into their library. Each player. So then they draw seven cards. Exile emergency powers. This is a draw spell for seven. For two draw seven. For you and your opponent. I do not like that. The only this kills Golgari. Let's put it that way. It it would help you with Golgari in the, in an undergrowth deck per se. But I don't see why you would play this for seven mana. I feel like there should be a discount for you to be basically do um. I think it's called overflowing insight. Yes, overflowing inside. Target player draws seven cards. This is for five, six, yeah, seven mana. So, again, seven mana to draw you seven cards. But then you get to the adenum. And the adenum is an interesting, um, interesting. And it's, it's very interesting. If you cast a spell during your main phase, you may put a permanent card with converted mana cost seven or less from your hand onto the battlefield. Now, not everybody is a judge. I have not taken the judge classes. Um, or the course, or getting my judge license, but from my basic magic understanding of rules and laws, Magic the Gathering writes cards out from beginning to end based on what triggers first. So each player would shuffle their libraries, draw seven cards uh, first, and then you would do the addendum. The addendum would then allow you to put something from your hand. You may put a permanent card with converted mind cost seven or less from your hand onto the battlefield. Um, so that's 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 pretty cool. Like um, I, I like it. I <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> Let me see if this is uh, the right mana. But I'm thinking about my myself personally. I've always wondered how to get Fleet Sweller out there um, fast. <laughs> and I guess this would be a way to do it and still have um, stuff in hand. But uh, yeah, this is seven mana. And then <laughs> the next turn we can start taking out half their deck. Um, but that's, that's really my only thoughts on emergency powers. I've, I don't think it's worth the mythic just because this is each player's if this this would be a crazy card if it just targeted one player and had that addendum um i mean overflowing insight was a crazy card this uh you know this card right here it, and it had a mythic um it had a mythic it 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 was a mythic i'm sorry i know how to speak proper english today um This, this, this is the next one. Uh, incubation Incongruity. So, Incubation Incongruity. Look at the top five cards of your library. You, missed, you may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This is one of those blue-green hybrid manas, and it is a dual spell, so you cast one side or the other. This side is the sorcery. It is an uncommon um, incongruity is generic one, a green, and a blue. Instant, exile target creature. That creature's controller creates a 3-3 three, three green frog lizard creature token. Um, thoughts about this. I, I might get this wrong. There's... If I can spell it today, Gaia's Blessing, MTG. This. No. Okay, there was a card in Dominaria, and I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, but basically, it did this part. Incubation. Um, I wish I could think of it. I, I'm, I'm a little dodgy on Dominaria because I'm still missing a lot of cards. 
from the freaking cycle, and so I haven't been able to play with a lot of Dominaria. Um, the incongruity part, that looks pretty good for the colors it's in, you know? Blue-green, um, I mean, blue is mostly, when you think removal away, it is a tempo, you know? We have cards like, uh, man, why can't I think of it? Blink of an Eye. Uh, Blink of an Eye is the number one removal spell that I know in uh, Magic the Gathering that I've used personally. It's in many decks, but it's a tempo card. It returns target non land permanent to its owner's hand, and then, you know, the kick across and whatnot. But in green, everybody's been using um, abilities or cards like Rabid Bite. Rabid Bite MTG. Um, Rabid Bite, you know, is target creature or controller, uh, you control deals damage equal to power or, uh, equal to its power to target creature you don't control. Um, Rabid Bite and there's Prey Upon, which basically says, uh, I'll pull it up. I'm, I'm being lazy by not pulling it up. Prey Upon. So, Prey Upon says target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. There's the main two ways in these colors to um, do removal. This is the first time you get to exile at something. Exile is something that doesn't come back. All right, that means it doesn't come back for any time soon, unless it's a squee, but we're, we're gonna hope it's not a squee and you're giving them a 3-3 green frog just to get their squee off the board. Um, frog lizard. Frog lizard, mind you. Uh, <laughs> that's such a cool, uh, that's such a cool, uh, what should we call it? Um, token. I, I want to see what the token is. In fact, uh, bear with me, guys. I want to see if they have it here. Uh, f well, frog lizard token MTG. A frog lizard. Oh man, those those look cool. Uh, <laughs> a three three frog lizard. Anyways. We're going to go to this, uh, keep on pressing the wrong button, control minus, 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 there we go. We're going to go back to this, uh, row here, um, we'll, again, right to left, like we're reading a manga, um, and open, link a new tab, uh, so this first one, this, this one written in, I believe it is Spanish, it looks Spanish anyways, with the law creature, Ulo, yeah. That looks Spanish. So it's uh I was hoping it would have the English on here. I'm guessing not. I took notes on it the other day. Uh it's anguish. Um and I'll I'll just read it to you guys because I, I almost remember it word for word. I can't help you with the flavor text. I'm not that great. Um But basically it's a it's a Black, black, red, anguish. Uh, it's an instant, and it says destroy target artifact, creature, or planeswalker. This is such a weird card. Um, target creature, artifact, or planeswalker. I just, and, and especially in black and red. Okay, so we used to have a card. Oh, okay, okay, I remember the name of it. It was called a braid. And this was a, such a good card. Um, it, it kind of did what this card is trying to do. It was one generic, one red for destroy, uh, excuse me, destroy target artifact or uh, a braid deals three damage to target creature. Pick one. Um, and so this reminds me a lot of that. Uh, except for it also adds planeswalkers. And I mean, this is such a cool thing to be able to do to get rid of planeswalkers planeswalkers um in the current meta planeswalkers are a little harder to get rid of i mean they had a assassin's trophy which made it a lot nicer with guilds of ravnica but before that there wasn't a lot of cards that just dealt with planeswalkers right off and even if they were they might have just dealt with planeswalkers um in fact in the current meta uh, while I'm thinking about it, we'll go even Vraska's Contempt. Uh, this card was, for a long time, uh, the only card dealing with Planeswalkers and, and still being able to be played because you could also deal with creatures and then gain some life. Um, so, 
seeing Anguish here uh, do that, that that's pretty cool, you know, um, for Rakdos. That I, I'm I'm almost switching from Simic being my favorite guild to Rakdos being my favorite guild, just because I'm a little upset about that adept and that adept cost. Um, let's go into Gruel here. So we got Gruel Spellbreaker. Um, there is a new ability called Riot, and Riot looks sick. So Riot says this creature enters the battlefield with your choice of a plus one, plus one counter, or haste. You can make your creature bigger or finish out the game if we want to. So there is some hasty boys coming down, and that is that is awesome for Gruel. Gruel is looking sick at having haste in there. Oh, man. Trample, as long as it's your turn, uh, you and Gruel Spellbreaker have hexproof and you have a basically a um a uh, da, 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 da. wow i cannot believe uh shalai wow i cannot believe i almost forgot shalai voice of plenty um you you basically have a shalai voice of plenty where it says you planeswalkers you control and other creatures have hexproof um other creatures you control have hexproof you basically have a shalai every single time it's your turn. This is this, this is making control very look very crappy, and I, I don't know if Wizards is doing that on purpose between Azorius and and um with this addendum and um with right not right but having hexproof on your own turn and all that's just so cool. It's an ogre warrior. I. Ogres are very known in Gruul as uh, as the creature type. Um, she displays her scars with pride. That's awesome. That is an awesome card. Uh, buy four copies of it. Frenzied Erinx. At least I think that's how you spell. Hey, look, cats came back. Cat beast. Um, two generic, one red, one green. And again with the riot, choose between a plus one plus one counter or haste. Um, trample, frenzied erinx gets plus three plus zero until end of turn. If you pay four generic, one red, and one green, and it is already a three three for four. Uh, well, it could be a four four for four with trample. So it's not that is not a bad card for a common. Um, I would not mind drafting that. That's for sure. Um. <sighs> I'm honestly thinking of making red, green, red, green, blue. I don't know what that's called right off the tippy top of my head. Uh, I'm I'm going to look it up while while I talk about it. But uh, basically, I would I would rather make a red, green, blue deck to get uh, Simic Ascendancy off. Well, uh, in a, if you guys don't remember it from my last video, basically Simic Ascendancy brings this new. Um, new alternate one condition that says if you have 20 um growth counters on it you win the game and uh to put a growth counter on there every single time that you put a plus one plus one on a creature um that puts that many counters growth counters on on uh simic ascendancy so if i was trying to get simic ascendancy i would almost rather go for this riot ability um plus ex exploration and a red green blue deck than I would with this stupid adapt ability that might not even happen if you try to adapt and like you would have to be playing against people that do not know what a stack is uh really um because I would I would literally wait for you to adapt so that way I can kill your creature and make you have no mana to deal with whatever I'm about to throw at your face your next turn. That is, that's all you have to do. And like, for instance, uh, Aramunculus, all you have to do is do a cast down. For Zagana, all you have to do is do a um, Price of Fame. And then you, you've dealt with them. They're done with. They're over. Goodbye. Uh, I mean, it's it's looking like crap and people have warned me about this being a new player to Ravnica that that Simic might just not be a good guild in general uh even though they they look like they should be I mean you got you got draw power and you got power power so I don't know why we can't ever get these uh 
these two colors to work with each other. Other than, of course, in Merfolk, uh, Tribal for Mixalot, and that seemed to work just fine. Um, so red, green, um, and blue is Teamer, um, Intet, or Seta. Uh, I've heard it called Teamer. So, uh, I would rather make just a Teamer deck with Riot and, like, that's it. Because, I mean, you basically can put counters on on it with your Simic Ascendancy and make your your Hasty Boys or your Trample... Trampley, oh my god, I didn't notice that. They both have Trample. Holy crap. So yeah, you could just use Simic Ascendancy not even for its win condition, but for its actual Trample ability to just be so super damn aggro. That's what would make Teamer... Teamer Adapt... Not even Teamer Adapt. Teamer Riot. Let's take Adapt out of there. Team of Riot and Expiration, I think. That would, I, I believe that would be a thing, guys. So anyways, this is Sneaky Narcotic. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I really do appreciate it. I will be putting out more videos soon. I, this weekend is going to be crazy. It is Christmas for me. Um, whatever holiday you celebrate, enjoy it. Um, so anyways, this is Sneaky Narcotic, signing off.